You better get ready and better sit. Cause God so no showed him the rainbow's sign. He said it won't be water, but by the next time. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. God is still good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. We greet you in that name that is above every name. For the Bible declares that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue must confess that he is Lord. How blessed we are, how wonderful it is to be here on another wonderful Lord's Day. Amen, amen. The harvest is ended. Amen. And there is there no word from the Lord. Amen, amen. It's good to see so many of you once again. Good to see you, Shay Ray, all the way from, amen, Delaware. Amen, good to see, uh, uh, Anais. Like I ain't know her name. Amen, amen. Good to see her on the men. Delighted to see her in, in the worship service today. God is still good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generation. It was, I said it, it, it was a little, uh, it was a little cold and a little cool when we first walked in, but but now it's getting to be a little warm. Amen. 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 God bless. Amen. We are delighted. We, let me just say welcome, SMZ. Welcome all of those persons who are visiting with us today. Welcome Philadelphia and vicinity and those who are online from across the country and around the world. Amen. Amen. We are delighted to have on board this morning Brother Lamont Dante Jackson is on board. Sister Dollar Robinson Jax is on board. Sister Dar Darlene Williams Hayes is on board. Sister Jane Johnson is on board all the way from Sylvania, Georgia. And Brother Khalid Nafi is on board all the way from Atlanta, Georgia. Amen. Sister Paulette Wilson is on board all the way from Southwest Philadelphia. Sister Mary E. Green is on board from Middletown, Delaware. Sister Betty Trimble is on board all the way from Statesboro, Georgia. Amen. Trustee Terry Hawkins is on board. Amen. Still recovering from, amen, her remote location. Amen. Sister Dolly Robinson Jacks is on board. Sister Bernetta Robinson Doan is on board. Sister Mary Moy is on board. Amen. Sister Sandra Johnson Mack is on board. Amen. Sister Sheila Adams is on board. Sister Alexandra Hayes Walker is on board. We're delighted to have you on board. Amen. Deacon Harry Richardson is on board even as he's on his way from work. Amen. Sister Pamela Saunders is on board all the way from Glenside, Pennsylvania. Amen. Sister Hattie Foster is on board. Amen. My friend and pastor of the Mount Calvary Baptist Church, the Reverend Albert Gladstone Davis is on board. Delighted to have him on board. Amen. Sister Morris James is on board. And oh, amen in everybody. Amen. And Sister C.C. London is on board. Amen. Sister Carol Baines is on board. Sister, amen. Uh, 
Amen. Sister Ella Capel is on board. We're delighted to have you on board. Amen. We're delighted to have everybody on board. Lottie Dottie and everybody. Let us stand at this time. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hope. He is the King of glory. Amen. All right, good morning. How many of us again? God has brought us through another week. Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord one more time? How many of you know that there is power in the blood? I'm talking about that wonderful working power that is in the blood. So today as we sing together, we're going to talk about that amazing power that is the blood.
Great morning, SMZ. Today's scripture reading comes from Revelation chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, as it is written in the King James Version. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to shew unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. The word of God. Let us pray. Yes, <clears throat> Heavenly Father, it's once again that we come before you first just to thank you. We thank you for allowing us to wake up in yet another time on this side of the dirt. Father, we pray your blessings that as we continue with this service that you be in the midst. Father, we ask that you touch the choir, touch the musicians, touch the ushers, touch the, everyone that's in the pews, touch the media, Father, touch the pastor, Father, have your way with this service, Father. All these blessings we do ask in Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, Second Mount Zion. We welcome you to today's installation of our Sunday School lesson. Amen. It's good to be back, Wilbert. It's good to be back. Amen. Our lesson this morning will come from 1 Kings, and we will look at the 8th chapter beginning at verse 22, and then we'll jump around as the lesson writers have provided. Our key verse is verse 38 and 39, and our topic is, our house is a very fine house. Amen, our house is a very fine house. Uh, as before we get, we have just some brief announcements. Uh, as always, we ask that you would send your mail correspondence, specifically your tithes, to Second Mount Zion's post office box, which is P.O. Box 41839, Philadelphia, PA 19101. For those of you who are present, we ask that you would please refrain from eating or drinking in the sanctuary, unless it's medically necessary. Amen. You can get you a little sip, take what you got to do. And if you uh, make sure you take your trash with you, thank you, or dispose of it in a proper way. Uh, sick and shut-ins, we ask that if you or any member of your family takes ill, that you would please contact the office so that we can have a confirmed knowledge. We also are still efforting for our church anniversary uh, to participate. We ask that you would still participate and continue because we are efforting towards our goal. Amen. We still have a goal and we are still moving to that goal by the end of the year. Amen. And also in that vein, we ask that when you fill out your envelope that you would please put your name and write it clear and legible so that we know who the envelope is. Uh, next week, next week, next week following service, we will fellowship with the Mount Olive Baptist Church as Pastor Harry Moore Sr. celebrates his 30th anniversary. So immediately following service next week, we will go over to the Mount Olive Baptist Church to fellowship with them. Amen. Also, please note October 27th at uh, immediately following service. Right, Rev? Right after service, we're going to go over to Metropolitan Baptist Church, where we will be fellowshipping. Both uh, services next week and on the 27th, we expect to have the full choir uh, accompanying us as well. Uh, and also, uh, on October 8th, we will have our new members' uh, orientation graduation. Now, if all new members who have joined between 2021 and 2024, please see Sister Cheryl Hagler for more detailed information. Amen. Amen. 
Y'all quiet today. I know it. Y'all looking at me like I was strange. I was only gone for a week. Amen. And let me just say that last week we had the opportunity, uh, Deacon Green, Deacon Hagler, to accompany Pastor Moore as we uh, convened the 144th uh, Convention of National Baptist USA Incorporated. Now, let me say something about this convention. Um, uh, you know, Bill Clinton had his advisors. I think James Carville was one of them. Uh, uh, Obama had Vernon Jordan, attorney who was his advisor. President Jerry Moore has his advisor. And one of them is Dr. Reverend James Moore Sr., who advises not only the outgoing president, but also the incoming president. So I say that to say that even on a national level, Reverend Moore takes Second Mount Zion with him when we go to these conventions. And so he is well respected and he is someone in the convention and he takes Second Mount Zion with us. So we were doing convention business last week, but Second Mount Zion was present. Amen. Amen. And let me say before I start the lesson, I know I got um, last summer, all summer, we've been talking, we were talking about from the perspective of hope, right? Hope. And, and, and we looked at hope from the perspective of, you know, some of the Old Testament characters, Moses and Abraham and the such, the Israelites and how they overcome and all that. But sometimes I guess, you know, for us, those examples can be somewhat abstract, right? Because we're talking about events that happened 2,000 years ago, right? Well, today, Hope walked in the building. Hope, I didn't see how she got in the building, but she limped, but she came in the building. And that's Anais. And, and, and here's the thing why, why I say that, because, and we'll talk about this somewhat in this lesson, when terrible things, tragedies, or things befall us, right? It's about how you react to those things. And I, and, and I mentioned that, that passage in, in Proverbs, our uh, iron sharpens iron, and so a man sharpens the continents of his brother, right? And that was exactly what Anias did. When I went to see her in the hospital after an unspeakable tragedy happened, if y'all don't know, then y'all don't need to know what happened, but whatever. And when I go there, you know, I'm a little emotional, you know, overwhelmed by the, the situation. And I walk in and Anias, just how she's smiling now, is smiling then. And you talk about lifting, so I'm there to lift her up and she lifts me up. So she's a testament to when we talk about hope. She's the real example of hope. She is the fulfillment of what we talked about all summer in these Sunday school lessons. Amen. So I just want I just had to say that. So as, as we move uh, to this, uh, move from this quarter, we will be looking at worship and worship in the covenant community. And these lessons, uh, this, this, this quarter, we'll look at worship practices offered as a graceful response, and I'll say to God's promise, and you've seen it from the perspective of Abraham, how he worshiped, how he builds an altar, how he worships God, and later with the, the children of Israel. So we'll talk about this, this worship and worshiping. And today our worship will center around the temple of Jerusalem. And the temple of Jerusalem was a sacred place where God and humanity's spaces will come together or meet. And it represents the temple and even this church represents where God's desire to meet his people and to dwell among his people. 
And doing that, he was able to reach the nations through his people. Amen. So, so when, we, when we look at this temple and what it represents and how it was set apart, we'll talk about consecration versus uh, dedication. But when we look at 1 Kings, where our, where our lesson comes from, it begins with the death of King David and then the reign of his son Solomon, who excelled all the kings of the earth in riches and wisdom. We know that Solomon, you know, he asked for wisdom over riches. Solomon's unfaithfulness later in life set the stage for a general apostasy among the people. The harsh politics of his son Reboham led to a revolt of the northern tribes and the division of Israel. The northern tribes will subsequently be called Israel, while the southern tribes will be called Judah. First Kings describes the construction of the temple in Jerusalem and shows the importance of proper worship. God's faithfulness to his people is shown as he sends prophets, most notably Elijah, to warn them not to serve other gods. The books of 1 and 2 Samuel, 1 and 2 Kings combined are a chronicle of the entire history of Judah and Israel's kingship from Saul to Zedekiah. 1 and 2 Chronicles provides only the history of Judah's monarchy, and the Book of King provides historically accurate information concerning the sons of Israel from the death of David to the ascension of Solomon to the destruction of the temple and Jerusalem by the Babylonians. Thus, Kings traces the history of two sets of kings and two nations of disobedient people, Israel and Judah, both of whom were growing indifferent to God's law and his prophets and were headed in the direction of captivity. As we know, the author is widely unknown. So when we get to this lesson, and, and this lesson will be basically Solomon dedicating or consecrating uh, the temple. So this lesson, the situation is that this lesson is you'll see Solomon's prayer of dedication for the temple or consecration. We'll talk more about that. Um, Complication is the distraction, and I think the last time I stood up here, I talked about distractions, the distraction of sin or losing focus. The gospel solution is repentance and restoration. And then if I give you what we're going to aim for, I would say that we would aim, because this is what Solomon does in this lesson, is stand on God's promise. Stand on his promise, as the hymn writer said. Aaron was standing. I ain't going to sing it. Let me keep moving. I got to move. No, I got to move. I got to go. So, I got to go. So, so when we look at, when we come to this dedication slash consecration of the temple, remember David, after David had his conquest and he fought his forts and fought his battle, and everything was at rest, and he looks around, and he says, you know what? I'm living in this big old mansion on the hill, while God, because the presence was in the Ark of the Covenant, his presence was in tents, because they were a transient people, they moved. And so he got this idea, and he says, you know what? I'm gonna build God a house. He says, I'm going to do God a favor. Why don't I build him a house? And he consults uh, with the prophet. The prophet says, you know what? That sounds like a good idea. And sometimes we have some ideas that sound good, but they don't quite align up to what God wants. And God says, and he has this idea, and he says, I'm going to do it. And then the prophet Nathan says, yeah, go ahead and do it. That's a good idea. And God comes to Nathan and says, Nathan, hold up now. Tell David to pump his brakes. First of all, David, did I ask you to build? Did I say anything that I was uncomfortable? Did I say I needed a house? I'm, I'm good where I'm at. But I tell you what, David, you can't do it. And he can't do it for the reason that he says, David, you're a man of war. You have blood on your hands. You are not the one to build me the temple. So what he says when we look at 2 Samuel 7, verses 12 through 16, here's God's response to that. 
And he says to him, he says to David, when your days are fulfilled and you rest with your fathers, when you did, he says, I, God says, I'll do it, not you. I will set up your seed after you, this is Solomon, who will come from your body and I will establish his kingdom and he shall build a house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, he shall be my son. If he commits iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the blows of the sons of men. But my mercy shall not depart from him as I took it from Saul. That sounds like a promise. When I remove before you and your house and your kingdom shall be established forever before you and your throne shall be established. There was a couple promises in there. He says he will build the house. He says who will build it. He says he will not, his mercy shall not depart like he did before with Saul. And your kingdom shall be established forever. So this is the backdrop. So Solomon is born, and it takes him 40 years to construct this temple. 40 years. Where's Pastor Moore? I wonder how long it took us to get this new building. I better move, Wilbert. I better move. Yeah. Yeah. And so... He gets to the point of completion. The temple is completed. And so what he does is they have a celebration. They have a worship. And how many know with worship come sacrifice, offering? They brought lambs and cows and they had a sacrifice for the temple. It's where church anniversary comes in, y'all. That's why we, uh, yeah, I'm put that, let me stick that in there, right? Because we got this beautiful edifice and we want to celebrate it. And when you celebrate it, you celebrate it with something. Y'all going to get it when y'all get home. But that's part of our church anniversary. I thought I would slip that in there. And so he celebrates and, and then he prays. He does, he prays over it. Now, Consecration versus dedication because he consecrates this holy place and sets it apart, right? And in the, and in the Old Testament, they consecrated things, right? Let's see if I can make this plain. That table, that's communion table. Heaven forbid if I would sit my water bottle on it. Heaven forbid if I would use that table, if I want to position something and it's in a good position, right? Because many of our beautiful ladies that are adorned in white says that that table serves a purpose and one purpose only. And there were some people, if you didn't put that cloth on there at the correct that's why I try not to touch it, y'all. I don't want to mess it up. Because it was consecrated, it was set apart, right? In the Old Testament. But somebody fact checked me, but I think in the New Testament, people were consecrated and set apart for a purpose. Things and objects that are inanimate. Yeah, but you know, that's all right, though. The, uh, the table is fine. So we have the table set apart. And we ain't going to mess with y'all. We ain't touching it. Just going to do what it do. I ain't putting nothing on it, and I ain't even going to barely look at it. <laughs> Amen? That's right. I don't even want to bump it. So it, 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 it's set apart for its purpose. Then this, this temple was consecrated and dedicated and he does this with a prayer and he prays and, 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 and he prays and he has, before we get to our lesson, 
He dedicates it. They have a sermon. They have an offering. And then when we get to our lesson, we see Solomon's posture. Solomon stood before the altar because he goes from talking to the Lord to he turns to the people. He stood before the altar of the whole assembly with his hands spread towards heaven. His posture. And he prays. But we notice that his posture is focused on God, heaven, where he is, right? We notice that even if you remember Daniel, what got Daniel in trouble? They made a decree that you got to pray to the king. And Daniel said, well, I am going to pray towards Jerusalem. Now, the reason that Daniel prays towards Jerusalem, because that's where the temple was and that's where the presence of God was. But we know with the fulfilling of Pentecost that the presence of God is everywhere. So you don't necessarily have to face east or face Jerusalem to pray. But your focus should be on God. So if you throw your hands up and you look to heaven where you know God resides, then you're pointing in the right direction. Amen. You're directing your prayer. So where you direct Solomon directed his prayer and his hand spread toward the altar. And he first he recognizes the uniqueness of God. God, the father of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or on the earth. Who keeps your covenant of love with your servants. He keeps and here. What Solomon's doing is he's standing on the promises of God. Because what did God promise? God promised that someone would come from your line, that you would build this check. Not only will you prevail, but I will never withhold my mercy from you. God is so good that in spite of what you did, he won't withhold. In spite of what you did, he did not withhold his son coming to save us that he promised us in Genesis 3.15. His covenant was that someone from your line would sit on the throne. Well, guess who comes from the line of David? Yeah, y'all can say it. That name that works every time. Thank you, Basil. Thank you, Basil. So that name that works is Jesus. And so here he dedicates, we see his posture. And when we, when we, when we look at the temple, right, and we talk about He prays to the temple, right? And we talk about the consecration, New Testament, and the reason Daniel turns when he gets in trouble, he prays towards Jerusalem because, you know, that's where the presence is. But when we get to the New Testament, thank God for the New Testament. Here's what Jesus says when we look at John, the second chapter, verses starting at verse 19. And this is when Jesus comes into the temple and he sees them exchanging and doing all type of stuff with the temple. And he cleanses the temple. He says, my house, this is a house of prayer. And Jesus answered and said to them, destroy this temple. And in three days, I will raise it up. They were confused about what temple meant because they were so focused on the physical building. Then Jesus said, it has taken then, then the Jews said, it has taken 46 years to build this temple. We're talking about Solomon's temple. It took 46 years to build. And you will raise it up in three days? Now, what kind of building process is that? It took us a whole summer to get out the ground down the street. He says, it has taken 46 years to build this temple, and you will raise it up in three days. But he was speaking of the temple of his body. There's a shift. Consecrate people, not things. 
Revelation. When you get to Revelation chapter 21, verse 22, here's what John. But I saw no temple in it. When you get to heaven, ain't no temple. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. New Testament, your body is a temple. How do you treat it? So, so, so he consecrate his posture. We see his posture of, of, of dedication, his, his position, he points to God, right? And he points out God's uniqueness. There's no one like you. You keep this covenant. He's standing, the reason he's praying, because he's standing on a covenant. God's promise. How many know God's promise is good? He says, you have kept your promise to your servant David, my father. With your mouth you have promised. With your hands you have fulfilled it. So he says, not only did he talk the talk, but he walked the walk. He'll do just what he said. I think we sing that. Won't he do it? How many know? So why can't you stand on those promises? And let me say you can stand on because it's easy to stand on them right now. But when adversity hits, right? And here's, here's the adversity because they, Solomon kind of looks ahead and says, I know, he must know his people. Kind of like pastor knows his people. And he says, um, he, he, he lists seven things that would happen or, or, or that, that's going to happen. And, and we, when we get to, to the portion of this lesson, he talks about the sword famine and the plague. Because of their disobedience, he says that when these things happen, God, please be attentive or hear when we repent. God is still merciful. He said he will not cut, he will not withdraw his mercy. So he says, when famine or plague comes to the land, blight, mildew, or locusts, or grasshoppers, when the enemy beseech them anyways, whatever disaster or disease may come, how many know that we shall suffer persecution? We shall. So these categories that he speaks of, speaks of oppression and uh, fatalities and human adversaries. And even famine, uh, we talk about there's a shortage of this, there's a shortage of that. You know, when we have a drought, there's a shortage of corn or whatever, whatever. When these things happen, what do you do? Who do you turn to? Amen. Y'all figure that out. We'll figure that out by the end of this lesson, by the way. And he says, when a player or a plea is made by among your people, Please be aware of their afflictions of their own heart. These things, even when they self-afflict themselves. Please be aware of those. And when they spread their hands, when they come back and spread their hands to the temple, when they repent, God will hear you. And so Solomon is making this plea to them. And there's a couple imperatives that we'll see in 39, we'll see here, forgive the net. Then hear from heaven, your dwelling place, forgive and act and deal with anyone according to all they do, since you know their hearts, for you alone know every human. So he's asking for these imperatives that he would hear, act, and then forgive. We could take a lesson from that, because maybe we need to listen to some folk, forgive some people, and act accordingly. Y'all get that when y'all get home. Yeah. Because y'all ain't with me today. He says, and, and he knows his people because he says, when they sin against you, and King James says if, but it, it's when. Because we surely going to sin. Surely. When they sin against you, for there is no one who does not sin. There is no not one of us. And you become angry because your sin separates you from God and it angers God. When you kindle God's anger and give them to their enemies who take them captive, so your sin leads to you being captive to something, leads to you being taken away or separated, because that's what sin does, it separates you from God. When you are separated from them, 
But then he says, hear, sustain, and forgive. Three more imperatives. And if then, he says if. Now this is an if, not when, because still waiting for some of us to turn back. And if they turn back, to you with all their heart and soul in the land and the enemies who took them captives pray toward the land you gave their ancestors toward the cities you had chosen that I have built for your name, if they do. And I think that this whole lesson can be summed up in one verse in Second Chronicles, and you're familiar with it. Second Chronicles 7.14. If my people, he does say if, my people, now whose people are you? Who you belong to? If my people who are called by my name, if, if you could just humble yourself. See, we can't get past that first comma. If we would just humble ourselves and pray, Many times we pray without humility. If they would humble themselves and pray and seek this action in this. Seek my face. And here's the heart. And turn from their wicked ways. Now, if you do these things, if you humble yourself, if you pray and you seek God and you turn, right? Repentance. Turn. Not 360, but 180. Go the other way. If you do those things, here's the promise. I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. So maybe we have not humbled ourselves, and maybe we haven't prayed, and maybe we haven't seek, and maybe we haven't turned. Because we're waiting for him to heal the land. We're waiting. But a lot of times, our feelings get in the way. Now, I'm going to say this, and then I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to go to my seat. The story goes as such. All of you know Kobe Bryant from Lower Marion, right across, you know, right across the City Avenue. As a rookie, as great as Kobe Bryant was, as a rookie, he gets to the playoffs. And it's a close game. And Kobe has, um, Kobe has a chance to win the game. Gets three shots. All three shots. He misses. They lose. Playoffs over. Kobe's on the bench. The camera turns to him. And Kobe's sitting there with his hands in his face. And the announcer's saying, oh, man, he must feel terrible. He had a shot to win the game, and, and, he, and they lost. So he's, he, he must feel dejected. He must feel terrible. It's a terrible feeling. So they get to, um, to Kobe, and they interview him. And the interviewer says, oh, Kobe, I mean, you missed those shots. You must feel terrible. You know how you feel. You know what Kobe says? He says, feelings? Because he says, you know, we seen you over there with your hands, your head, your head hanging down with your hands covering your face. You must have felt terrible. Tell us, you know, what are you feeling? And Kobe says, feelings? He says, what does feelings have to do with it? He says, what you see me was sitting there working out why I missed those shots, thinking through what happened. And he says, you know what? I figured out what I did wrong, and I won't do it again. period. It had nothing to do with feelings. And many times our feelings get in the way and we can't work through the problem. Solomon says that you will sin, that you will, and it did happen that they were taken captive, that you will be led astray, that enemies will come up against you. So are you going to be in your feelings or are you going to work through the problem figure out what you did wrong, and not do it again. How are you going to react? Kobe said, he, he kind of was mad. He said, feelings? What do you mean feelings? Feelings ain't got nothing to do with it. But when we let our feelings get in the way, that's when we make bad choices based on feelings. 
So what are you going to do? That's all I got. Amen. And amen. What a, what a challenging lesson when we look at Solomon's prayer. And, uh, and the reason that, that Solomon prayed this prayer, he was afraid that the people would sin. And he intercedes ahead of their sin to God to find out what would happen if the people sin. And so he prays to God because he was afraid that after completing the temple that they would sin. And that Second Chronicles seven fourteen, the Lord appears to Solomon again and uh, answered his prayer. And when he answered the prayer, he gave the solution that if they sin, this is what you need to do. And and when you read the, uh, the lesson text in the Sunday school, uh, you will see that his prayer includes adoration and worship. And there was at least nine requests that he requests of God and God heard his prayer and answered his prayer and said, this is what happened if they would turn from their wicked ways. In other words, stop doing what you're doing and turn and go in another direction. Then will I hear from heaven and I will heal their land. What if the people sin? And uh, I want to take Solomon's question and say, what happened when the people sinned? Because that if really translates when the people sinned. Not so bad to be sick, but it's bad to be sick and don't then you don't, don't see a see a see a doctor and see about what's wrong. And a lot of times we know we're sick, but we ain't ready to do anything about it. No sense in going to the doctor if you're not gonna follow his instructions. No sense in just come on, keep it, keep keep on coming to church and don't and don't get no better. No sense in keep on coming and you're not going to take the prescription. Why, why are you going to the doctor if you're not going to get the prescription filled? You see, this morning is, this, this morning is when you get the prescription filled. Uh, Deacon Simpson told you how he, he, told you, he told you the solution to the problem. If my people, which are called by my name, Turn from their wicked ways. I see. I, oh, did our young people get here? Oh, oh, I could just keep on going. Amen. Oh, you the representative today? Uh, amen. All right. Uh, we, we don't have a representative from our young people's class. Yay, white. Why you got me standing up here acting like and looking like I don't know what I'm doing? <laughs> I'm sorry, everybody. I, I forgot for a second. Okay. So, 
today in class, we talked about how when you're praying to God, you can't have too many long breaks in between your prayers because you're really supposed to pray every day. And not all your prayers can be about forgiveness because you did something wrong. You also got to thank God and you got to pray. You got to pray before you do something wrong, because when you only pray when you do something wrong, then it's like you're only praying when you need him and not when he needs you. So then we have people who only come on holidays and don't come to church every other day. And God kind of doesn't recognize them because it seems like it's 10 months every, between every visit. And so we just got to make sure we pray every day and pray consistently about different things so that Jesus still recognizes us. when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord, for this is the day that the Lord has made. I will, I will, I will rejoice and be glad in it, because I know who God is, because I know <laughs> who God is and what God has done for me in my life. I have a want, I have a desire to give God praise. I invite you to join me, whether it be to wave your hand, to clap your hands, whether it be to stand upon your feet, whether it be a whisper of thank you, Lord, whether it be a shout or a cry of hallelujah, join me and give God some praise. I give God praise because he kept me all night long. I had a place to lay my head last night. I give God praise because he woke me up this morning and it started me on my way. I give God praise because I have the activity of my limbs. I give God praise because I can still feel the aches and the pains of these bones and muscles in this old ragged body of mine. Let's give God some praise. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Say, oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is worthy, worthy. 
that worship going. Hallelujah. Thank you. The Son of God is lifted high. 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 Oh, the Son of God is lifted high. The Son of God is lifted high. The Son of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The Son of God is magnified. The Son of God is magnified. The Son of God is magnified. Glory. 
Amen. Amen and amen. God is still good. And his mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. How blessed we are. Our ministry moments is some clarifications today. Let me clarify what's going to happen on next Sunday and uh, the fourth Sunday in October. Now, uh, we get out at 11 o'clock and uh, the idea is that we would go over to Mount Olive after our morning worship, uh, but not at 11 o'clock. We're not a part of the 11 o'clock service. But if we arrive at 12.30 or shortly thereafter, they're going to feed us. And their service is at 2.30. Oh. Let's, 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 let's make sure that we got that clear. And the choir will be singing at 2.30. Not at 11 o'clock. We're not rushing to get over there. Amen? Y'all hear me now, hear me? Somebody gonna miss it and somebody gonna show up. We're not to show up until after 12.30, and they will be feeding, and the service will start at 2.30, and our choir will be singing. Now, uh, and the same thing will happen on the 27th of October, when uh, we go to Metropolitan. They're going to be feeding us also and the service is at uh, 2.30 or thereabout. Amen? Are we, are we clear? Amen. And uh, starting, starting this Wednesday, this Wednesday at noon, this Wednesday at noon will be a noonday Bible study. Amen. Y'all, y'all went silent on me. It's time for us to get back uh, to normalcy. As Jeremiah would say, the harvest is past and the summer is ended and we still are not saved. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? then why is not the health of the daughters of my people saved? If there is a word from the Lord, we ought to be getting better. Amen. Amen. So I, I look forward to seeing everybody on Wednesday. And if not at noon, then I'll see you at the uh, 7. Amen. Amen. And... Uh, the, the first of October, we will start up once again our mend discipleship class. Amen. And 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 uh, if you're interested, see me because that's a class you have to be invited to. Amen. If you're interested, see me, and uh, then I can see if you see if you make the requirements for being in that class and then we can and then we can move on and uh, i know we've been laxed a little bit uh, uh, uh the last year or so but there will be no more sunday morning meetings we come to church to worship not to do business you do business on other days, and if you, you cannot sacrifice other than Sundays to meet in your ministry meetings, then you really not, shouldn't be on a ministry. Amen. Amen. Amen? Those are our ministry moments for today. Y'all smile at me if you can.
Anybody come to worship him? Anybody know that your worship is tied up in his hope? Is there anybody here who knows your hope is not tied up in God's feelings? Because I know there were times when he felt disappointed in me, but he gave me grace. I know there were times he was let down by me, but he gave me mercy. Fact about it, I heard it in Jeremiah that I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Thoughts of peace and not evil. To give you an expected end. So my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame. But I'm going to hold, I'm going to lean on Jesus' holy name. There's hope in your worship. We've approached a time in worship where we can go to God in prayer. And you can approach the altar at this time as we cast our cares at the Savior's feet. And our very own minister, Tiffany Curtis, will go to him on our behalf. Father, we come before you just first saying thank you. We thank you, God, for a day that we've never seen before. We thank you for new blessings and mercy and grace that chases after us each day. We thank you, God, for a place to come and worship in person, God, for a place to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father God, right now we ask that you would search our hearts for you know us, that you would try and test every anxious thought, God, that if there be anything in us that is not of you, that you would cast the God as far as the east is from the west to the dry places, God, never, ever, ever to return again. Father God, I come before you interceding on behalf of your children, God, of my brothers and sisters in the Lord and of myself, of those of us that are underneath the sound of my words. God, right now, God, we ask that we repent in the name of Jesus so that this prayer would not be hindered, God. We ask, God, that if there be anything in this place that is not of you, God, through the power and authority of Christ on the inside of each and every one of us, that it must flee in the name name of Jesus. We ask God that Jehovah Rapha would heal and would visit us, God, right now in the name of Jesus. We believe that you are still a God of signs, miracles, and wonders. We lay witness, God, to who you are, to what you've done, and what you will do. So heal now, God, in the name of Jesus. Diabetes, if it be your will. High blood pressure, if it be your will. Nausea, God, in the name of Jesus, if it be your will. Even identity confusion, God, if it be your will. Mental uh, disabilities, God, if it be your will. A shortness of breath, God, if it be your will. And if it's not your will, Father, we ask that the peace of God, peace, 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 that surpass of all understanding that it will be our portion this day and every day, Father. We ask, God, that you will touch your children, God, those that are in the need of a financial blessing, God, in the name of Jesus, those that have drama on the job and drama in their homes, God, that you would go in in the name of Jesus and you will be the cure to chaos, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And if for whatever reason, God, it is your will that we endure the storm, God, that we will be all the more better afterwards father that we will be witnesses of you God that people would be able to see us and get a glimpse of the man from Galilee God we ask that you will touch our pastor from the top of his head to the sole of his feet God that you will anoint the man of God afresh every day God that you will anoint those that you surround him with God the leaders God to carry the vision that you have given him God in the name of Jesus that unity will be the portion of this branch of Zion oh God we love you on today 
God, and I feel that it's okay. We thank you, God, for Anias right now. We thank you, God, that you allowed her to enter into this place, God. We ask God in the name of Jesus that you will continue to wrap your loving arms around her and the Stafford family, God, in the name of Jesus, that healing will continue to be that portion, mental, physical, psychological, and even financial, God, in the name of Jesus. Have your way in us for your glory, God, in accordance with your word, only because of your will. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus, that name that is above every name, the name that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess, and we believe that it is so. Amen.
Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why. I don't walk by sight. 
trust in God. I trust in God. I trust in God. I trust God. Because he is faithful. I trust in God. Because I sought the Lord. And he heard my prayer. I trust God. Because he keeps his promise. He promised never to leave us alone. I said he promised never to leave us alone. And he kept his promise. That's why I can trust him. I can trust him because he's victorious. I can trust him because he took everything that evil had to offer and still got up with all power in his hand. I trust in God because he heard my prayer pitted my every groan therefore I can walk by faith not knowing what tomorrow will bring but knowing who holds tomorrow I trust God God, we thank you. We thank you for another opportunity. Thank you for another privilege to stand and proclaim your divine word. Give us power to preach, not for fame, not reputation, but that the seed of the gospel might fall upon good soil and that the harvest will truly be great in the masterful and in the marvelous name of Jesus. Amen and amen. There is a word that's found in the, the last book of the Bible. easiest book in the Bible to find or one of the easiest one anyway the first being Genesis and the last being Revelation uh, Revelation chapter chapter 1 and verses we will read verses 1 through 3 Interest and familiar words. Listen to the words of the text. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants things which must shortly take place. And he sent and signified it by his angel to his servant, John, who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ to all things that he saw. Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the word of this prophecy 
and keep those things which are written in it, for the time is near. The word of God. And for these next few moments, I simply want to talk about the revelation of Jesus Christ. The revelation of Jesus Christ, the, the uncovering of Jesus Christ, the unveiling of Jesus Christ. Yeah. We need to take a good look at who Jesus really is. You get a glimpse of him from the Gospels. And there are those, there are those who say and try and get you to shy away from the book of Revelation. Uh, Satan, Satan don't want you to read Revelation because because there is a blessing in just reading it. See, he tried to get you to stay away from Genesis and Revelation. And, and so I stay in Genesis and Revelation most of the time. Because Genesis tells you about his interest into the world. And Revelation talks about Minister Yates talks about his doom. And Satan don't want you to know about his doom. So he, he gets you to say that something mystical, and it is mystical, and scary about Revelation. But Revelation is one of the easiest books in the Bible to understand. Because, because Revelation, Revelation, and, 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 and I like John because whenever you read the Gospel of John or any book that John writes, John always gives you the purpose and gives you the key to understanding his book. When I, when I read the Gospel of John in John chapter 20 and verse 30 and 31, it says that Jesus did many other things that are not written in this book, but these are written in order that you might believe that he is the Son of God. And when I, when, I, when I get to Revelation, John gives me the key to understand his book. Would you like to have this theological disclosure? I'm glad you asked, because it's in, it's in verse 20 in chapter 1. You, you, see, you see verses 19 and 20 uh, of, of Revelation. John gives you the key to understand his book. John was told to write the things which you have seen. Write the things that are and the things that shall take place after this. That's the key to Revelation. See, see, uh, the first step of the outline to write the things that I had seen, and we'll look at the things that John has seen, th that those are in chapter one. And the things that are or this present age, or the church age, though that's chapters 2 and 3. But the things that shall be hereafter, that's from 4 to chapter 21. Now you got the outline, now you will never get mixed up uh, because that's the outline and the key uh, to understanding Revelation. Watch verse 20, because you're going to see some things and hear some things, and John explains what the mystery means. Verse 20, he said, the mystery of the seven stars that he saw in his right hand and the seven golden lampstands, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. 
I said the seven star. See, see, that's what the Bible calls me an angel. Unto the angel of the church at second Mount Zion, 38th and Paris, meaning messenger and the one who brings the message to the church. Don't take that down yet. I ain't finished. Because the stars that he saw in his right hand and seven golden uh, lampstand, the seven stars that you'll see in chapter one are the angels to the church and the seven lampstands which you saw are the seven churches. Amen. You see, Revelation will reveal the close relationship and the communion with his church. Revelation, see, shows how closely related Jesus is to his church. Uh, ver ver verse 13, verse 13 says, he's in the midst of the seven lampstands. In other words, Jesus is in the midst of his church. And why wouldn't he be in the midst of his church since he's the head of the church? And, 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 and so it, uh, your, your head is closely related to your body. I, I think I said something simple and profound. I, I said your head is closely related to your body. He, 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 yeah, yeah. It, 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 and so it communicates and communicates with his church. Your head communicates your body. That's where the central station is in your brain that communicates to the rest of the body. It happens in the brain. Y'all not going to talk to me. It, it's, it's my brain that tells me to reach out and pick up stuff. And, and my nervous systems and, 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 and uh, all of the, what, 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 the, the, the neurons and stuff that's connected, connected to my nervous system is connected to my brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's my, it's my brain that tells me when to walk. And, and, so, and so not only, not, not only is Jesus closely related to his church and communes with his church because he got messengers. He got messengers to commute his, communicate his message. And John, John does not try to separate himself from him. He says, I am your brother and companion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. John, in verse 9, he says, I, John, both your brother and companion in tribulation. Yeah. yeah. John, 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 John saw this vision, but, but also Christ is not complete. Now, y'all need to get this. Christ is not complete without his body. No head is complete without a body. Yeah. He came to bring a revelation of the Father. See, the whole Trinity is in Pandora is involved in this revelation because the God is the source of the revelation given through Jesus Christ to his angels to John there's a fourfold source to the seven churches it's right here in text it is the revelation of Jesus Christ. And, and you really can see from, from, from Genesis to Revelation, all it does is reveal who Jesus is. 
I, I keep on telling y'all, ain't but three things that you need to know, and that's more, more, and more about Jesus, and we're going to learn more about Jesus today. I didn't give it to them, but if they can get me uh, Matthew, Matthew 11, 29, Matthew 11, 29, you see, if you are a servant of Jesus Christ, you're always learning more. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and I will give you rest for your soul. Yeah. You, 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 if, if you always, if you are always in anxiety and all tore up about this and all frustrated about that, it may need, it may be that, that you need to take the yoke of Jesus. You, 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 know, you, you know, we used to sing a song, it's so hard to get along, I just can't hardly get along. Stop singing that song if you're a believer. Because if it's that hard to get along, you got the wrong yoke. Jesus said, my yoke is easy. Come and learn of me. That, that, you, you know, and, and you got to, that's how come I emphasize Bible study and church school so much because you got to learn of him. You see, I, I, I know something about him in the Gospels, but when I get the revelation of Nas, I learned something else about Jesus. What? I learned, I learned that he's no longer a victim, but he is the victor. Yeah, yeah. He, he's no longer. John, watch John now. In the Gospels, John can lay his head in his chest. But when you get the revelation, John says, when I heard him speak, I fell like a dead man. He's no longer, I learned when I get the revelation, look at verse 12, and I'm going to run down there a little bit. Look at verse 12, John says, when I turned to see the voice that spoke with me, and having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands, and what else? Keep on going. And in the midst of the seven lampstands, one likened to the Son of Man. He no longer has a towel around his waist like a servant, but he's got a towel girded about his paps. Like the high priest, clothes with a garment down to his feet and girded about his chest with a golden girdle. I learned something else about Jesus. His hair, his head and his hair was white like wool and white as snow and his eyes like flames of fire when I turned to see who talked with me. His feet were like fine brass and if he had refined in a furnace, looked like he'd been walking in the fire. His feet were burnt and brown like my feet if I take off my shoes. Now you, now, now, now you know what Jesus looked like. And his voice as the sound of many waters. He had in his right hand seven stars. God, Jesus controls the message to his church. Because the stars in his right hand and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. And his countenance was like the sun shining in his strength. You see Jesus like the sun at the noonday hour. And nobody can look straight up into the sky and look at the sun. You see Jesus in his splendor and in his glory and in his power. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. I couldn't stand to look at him. I couldn't stand to listen to him because he's no longer a victim, but he is the victor. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't rob 
the grave of its victory. Snatch the keys from Satan. Now and has all power in our hand, in his hand. And he said unto me, John, don't be afraid, it's me. John, don't, don't be afraid, it's me. He's closely related to his church. You don't have to be afraid uh, of revelation and you don't have to be afraid of Jesus. I, I, I am the first and the last. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I am he that lives and was dead. Behold, I'm alive forevermore. He's no longer a victim. I have the keys of hell and death in my hand. And so the revelation of Jesus will defeat, we learn that it will defeat Satan and how he will prepare a place in heaven for us. That's what we learn about Jesus when you look at him in Revelation. And when you get further in the Revelation, it's written on his thigh, Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, 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 and see, this Revelation, is, it, it, he revealed himself as a person. The person, the Lord Jesus Christ. But not only does he reveals himself as Lord, but, but he, re he reveals himself as Israel's Messiah. He is the long-awaited Messiah. He is the one that they rejected and they will discover, they won't have a chance to reject him now because he's in his splendor and, and in all of his power. And, and, and I stopped by to tell somebody today, can you get me up on this mic a little bit? I, 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 I stopped by to tell somebody today that, that, that he has all power in his hand. I, I, I stopped by to tell somebody that, that, that he is the victor. I was about to tell you that he can handle everything that Satan can throw at you. He took everything that the devil had to offer. Evil men. He let evil men put a crown of thorns on his head. He let evil men pierce him in the side and ribbits in his feet. But on the third day, got up with all power in his hand he has all power whatever your problem is he's got the power he can handle everything that comes your way there is nothing too hard for god yes my brother and my sister but not only is he revealed as Jesus Christ as Lord, and not only is he revealed as Israel's long-awaited Messiah, but he's revealed as the Lord and judge of the church and of the world. He is the Lord. And the reason that the devil don't want you to read Revelation because there is a blessing in just reading Revelation. Look at verse 1. Verse 1 said, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave to his servants, things that must come to pass, he sent and signified. And that word signified means that there's a whole lot of signs in Revelation. The stars is a sign. It's a sign of the messenger that goes to the church. And, and John said there's, in verse 3, there's a blessing for those who read it. But, but there is a requirement when you read Revelation. Not only must you read it, but you got to hear the words of this prophecy. And, and not only do you hear the words of this prophecy, you got to keep these words of this prophecy. There's a threefold 
fold blessing here and the threefold blessing go together you just can't read it and then don't do anything about it you got to hear the word of the Lord and when you hear the word of the Lord you got to do something about it for I remember being a boy and, and, and my daddy would tell me one time he would tell me to do something and I would act like I didn't hear him he said boy did you hear what I said and in, in, in other words you better get on the move and you better do something and when you hear the word of the Lord and when you hear a message you gotta do something about what you heard yes Lord but I'm so glad that he affirms his deity yes Lord you see the completeness of Jesus Christ you see the sevenfold spirits of Jesus Christ in the revelation you see the fullness of Jesus Christ but you see the continuation of Jesus Christ because I heard I heard him say I am he that was dead I am he that is and I am he that is to come in other words Jesus meets himself all the while he's going and coming at the same time he meets himself and this is the Trinity yes Lord and then finally my brothers and my sisters you see him as the conquering king right on King Jesus no man can hinder you no diseases can hinder you no enemy can hinder you right on King Jesus because he's Lord of Lord and King of Kings do you know him I said ain't he all right I don't know how you feel about it but every day I learn something else about Jesus when my back is against the wall I learned that he can make a way out of no way when I'm down and out I'm learning that he can pick you up and turn you all around do you know him ain't he all right I'm so glad that I'm learning more and more about Jesus when I get hurt by church folk in the world but I learned that he'll give you balm for your bruises when I get sick he'll give me healing for my hurt when I'm going the wrong direction he'll pick me up and turn me around and plant my feet on a solid rock to stay I'm learning more about Jesus than I've ever known before I've learned that he's no longer on the cross but he's sitting at the right hand of God making intercession for you and me every time I mess up he tell the father give him a chance because I died for him I shed my blood for him and the father give me another chance and you know what my blessing is my blessing is I got up this morning and started on my way I don't know about you but is there anybody here who been blessed I don't know but I've been blessed from heaven I've got a blessing and I like the blessings of Jacob I've seen God I've come face to face with God because he's near his church the time is near and he's close to his church and I've come face to face with God and I'm yet alive I woke up this morning I was breathing and let everything that has breath praise the Lord I'm gonna praise him what you gonna praise him for I'm gonna praise him for the things he's already done I'm gonna praise him for what he's doing right now and since God's nature God is good and if he was good yesterday and if he's good today 
today I'm going to praise him for tomorrow because on tomorrow he'll still be good hey hey ain't he alright won't he make a way for you I'm glad for the book of Revelation and I'm going to keep on reading it because I want to know more and more about Jesus hey hey Revelation unveils and uncovers the fullness of Jesus Christ. And then you realize that his body cannot be complete. His, his body cannot be complete without the head and the head cannot be complete by the body. The question is now, are you a part of his body? If you're a part of the body of Christ, you're all right. But if you're, if you're not a part of his body, because he, when he's coming back, he's coming back for the body of Christ. He's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. And maybe you are in the body and there's no blood getting to your limbs. And you're, you're, you are laying dormant in the, you're laying dormant in the body. And if I were you, I wouldn't, I wouldn't tear it too long laying dormant in the body. Because when limbs are dormant in the body and not getting the blood, sometimes they have to amputate. And you, you, you don't want to be disconnected from his body because he protects his body. As we're standing on our feet, the invitation, the invitation to church membership and Christian discipleship is extended to you. He's inviting you to be a part of his body. He's inviting you. If you're here today, he wants you to come and be a part of his body that you can continue to be fed and you can continue to be nursed in the Lord. You are you are a member in the body of Christ. Jesus and he wants to communicate to you. He wants to be close to you so you can be nurtured in his word. He says that I am he. See, and the reason that I know Jesus can take care of you in the past, he can take care of you in the present, and he can take care of you in the future. I am he that was and is and is to come. You see, he will continue. Once you accept Jesus Christ, he says, I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the beginning and the end. In other words, I can see you through. Nothing, nothing can happen to you because he can see you through because he's going to be alive yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He'll still be here. Anything else will come to know. He's not like a chaff blowing in the wind. But he is, he is the eternal Christ. Came from his eternity past on his way to eternity present. He's welcoming you. He's inviting you to come. One of the churches said, see, what I like about God is, that he's not going to knock the door down. He's not going to force you to do anything. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If 
if any man hear my voice, for me open up the door, I'll come in and sup with him and he with me. Just raise your hand. Our ushers will, will make sure that you have one because it's giving time. Praise the Lord. And what kind of giver does the Lord love? Amen. We are ready to give. We're going to ask all of those persons. You can give by Giblify or you can scan the QR code on the screen. Amen. And uh, let me just make an announcement for those who may not know we have transferred from Easy Tide to Givelify. Amen. And uh, there was a tutorial and you can go on the website and get the tutorial. And uh, it's a very simple process. Even, even I did it when I was on vacation. Amen. Even I did it when I was on vacation. Amen. Oh, man, that's a good idea. <clears throat> when you're on vacation, there's no reason that you shouldn't give. Now, when I'm in person, I give in person. But when I was on vacation, I gave on Givelify. And, and Givelify is a lot simpler than Easy Tide. So you want to be on Givelify. Amen. Those, those persons in the balcony, you may come now. Let us stand facing the walls at the direction of our ushers.
things come of thee, O Lord. And of that own have we given thee. Amen, amen. Let us not forget, let us, because after the Lord's Supper, we will be singing a hymn and we will be going out. So let us not forget that uh, on the Wednesday, Wednesday at noon, Wednesday at seven. Amen. And uh, we look forward to seeing everybody. It's time to get back to business now. At seven o'clock, amen. All right, and uh, amen. Let let us uh, those those of you who uh, those who uh, to receive the right hand of fellowship today, you may come now. To those those who are to receive the right hand of fellowship, there's none. Oh, there's none. Amen. Uh, Minister Tiffany Curtis is going to come as we prepare for the Lord's Supper. Amen. If we can stand to our feet for the reading of the Lord's covenant, we will read together. I will read the light portion and we will read the dark together. Christ as our savior and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we do now in the presence of God, angels and this assembly, most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage therefore by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church and knowledge and holiness, to give it a place in our affections, prayers, and services above every organization of human origin, to sustain its worship, ordinances, discipline, and doctrine, to contribute cheerfully and regularly as God has prospered us towards its expenses for the support of a faithful and evangelical ministry among us, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel throughout the world. In case of difference of opinion in the church, we will strive to avoid a contentious spirit, and if we cannot unanimously agree, we will cheerfully recognize the right of the majority to govern. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion, to study diligently the word of God, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintance, to walk circumspectively in the world, to be kind and just to those in our employ, and faithful in the service we promise others, endeavoring in the purity of heart and goodwill towards all men to exemplify and commend our holy faith. We further engage to watch over, to pray for, to exhort and stir up each other unto every good word and work, to guard each other's reputation, not needlessly exposing the infirmities of others, to participate in each other's joys, and with tender sympathy, bear one another's burdens and sorrows, cultivate Christian courtesy, to be slow to give or take offense, but always ready for reconciliation. Being mindful of the rules of the Savior in the 18th chapter of Matthew, to secure it without delay, and through life, amid evil report and good report, to seek to live to the glory of God, who hath caused us out of darkness into his marvelous light. 
When we remove from this place, we will, it's possible, to unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. Amen. It was on that dark Thursday evening when Jesus had gathered into that large upper room but the cross loomed heavily in his path. And before they partook of the bread and the wine, they prayed. And so we're going to ask Deacon Simpson if he would come and ask God's blessings upon this bread and this juice our father and our God as we come now Lord we ask oh Lord that we would prepare ourselves for these elements Lord that you would search our hearts oh Lord or that we would go in our secret causes oh Lord that father God whatever all that we have with our brothers whatever fault that we have that within us oh Lord that we would so confess it right now, O Lord, confessing it to leave it at your feet, O Lord. So, Father, right now we ask, O Lord, that you would search us as you only know us, O Lord. And, Father God, that you would take these elements, that you would convert them from a carnal use to a spiritual use, O Lord. That, Father God, that you would see us washed in the blood of the Lamb of Jesus, O Lord, and that we would walk together, O Lord, in one. These are all things we ask in your Son, Christ Jesus. We say amen. 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 And after that supper that night, he, he took bread and broke it. And they all ate together. And likewise, he took the bread took the cup, and this is the cup of the New Testament, which is for the remission of sin. And we know that without the shedding of blood, that there can be no remission of sin, and they all drank together. And after supper, they sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. And we don't have a Mount of Olives, but we will be going our various and our separate ways, and we are to always be mindful of the rules of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and to secure it without delay. And the hymn will serve as a benediction. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, oh, feed me till I want no more. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven. Feed me till I want no Yeah. 